What's up guys, MJ back again. And this week we are in Nuremberg, the second largest city in the state of Bavaria, and our next stop in our tour of Northern Bavaria and the Franconian region. The city was documented as early as 1050 AD and grew quickly due to its position along major trade routes. In the 15th and 16th centuries, it became the center of the German Renaissance. It has a deep and rich history, but not without a dark past. During the time of Nazi Germany, Nuremberg was used as a staging ground for many rallies to support Hitler and to support the Nazi regime. And there's a lot of evidence of that here today in the documentation center and the Nazi rally grounds. Additionally, after the war, here's where the Nuremberg trials took place, of course, where officials in the Nazi regime were tried for their crimes. And like many other cities in Germany, Nuremberg was heavily destroyed during the war and had to be rebuilt over the years afterwards. But in spite of its dark history, Nuremberg is a beautiful city many things to see and do and so over the next few days we're going to try to enjoy as much of it as we can so we are here at saint lorenz a medieval church built originally around 1400 it actually became one of the first churches in Germany to be a Lutheran church in the year 1525. The church was built and paid for by the local city council and the wealthy members of the city. When I first saw the front of the church, it actually reminded me a lot of Notre Dame in Paris. It's really beautiful. Apparently there is some controversy on the church right now because there are some plans to modernize the interior to make it more you know, usable. Um, but we're looking forward to getting inside and checking it out before any of those changes are made, if they get made. So right now we are here at the Documentation Center and Nazi Party Rally Grounds in Nuremberg. It is an important part of the history here in Nuremberg and something that you know you really need to come check out to, to see the dark history of the city. Um, the exhibit, the main exhibit right now is closed due to construction as you can probably see behind me, uh, but they have a temporary exhibit which uh, we went in to check out and we just kind of finished in there. It is really heavy and really shines a light on just the darkness of the time and that part of history that we should never forget and it really looks at the causes and the consequences of the Nazi party, Hitler's rise to power and everything that happened here in the city of Nuremberg. So when you come to the city make sure you come out here make sure you take a look at the history make sure you remember and take a moment to reflect on that dark time in Germany's history and in, in Nuremberg's history. This is not a fun touristy thing to do, although it is important for the tourists to do it, and a lot of them do. There's over 300,000 visitors per year here, and you need to do it to reflect properly on the history of this city.
So we're currently walking down the Strasse de Menschenrechte, the Street of Human Rights. And this was opened in 1993. And the idea of it was to have a monument to what are considered the basic human rights. And so there's 30 elements, 27 pillars, and three other things here that each have a human right listed on it in German and one other language. So it's a, a spot to reflect on what are the basic human rights and, and what do they mean. So um, it's a really cool spot to check out. And again, just taking some time to reflect. So we are here in the main Marktplatz of Nuremberg and we are eating one of the most highly recommended foods here to get in Nuremberg, the Drei and Wegler. And we have both mit Zempf, both with mustard, and one with sauerkraut. So we're going to try these out and see if they live up to the hype. Mm. That's really, really good. I definitely think it lives up to the hype. So we're here in the main market square of Nuremberg and behind me is the Schöne Brunnen, the beautiful fountain. And it is gorgeous, it is absolutely beautiful. And there's golden rings on the grill of the fountain. And the rumor has it that if you make a wish and turn the ring three times, your wish will come true. So we're gonna find those rings, make some wishes and see if they come true.
we're here at a Riverside restaurant right along the river, hence the name Riverside. We decided to change it up and go for Italian tonight instead of the traditional German or Franconian food that we've been having, just because we needed a little break from that. Uh, food just came out, it looks amazing. I have a salmon filet here with a red beet salad. Uh, all the other food looks great too, so again, it looks like another good restaurant that we picked here. Nice views along the water. The lighting now is all messed up because it's so bright behind us, but it is gorgeous. I'm just enjoying being in the city, enjoying another meal. here on Weisgerber Gasse. It's known as one of the most beautiful streets in all of Germany. It's actually a very well-preserved historic street here in Nuremberg with around 20 half-timbered houses that were not destroyed during the war and it is beautiful. So it's part of the historic mile of Nuremberg and is worth a visit to come here and then check out what the old city of Nuremberg looked like before it was destroyed and rebuilt and all of that. So to see these beautiful buildings, these beautiful half-timbered houses in their original state, it's absolutely gorgeous. So one of the tips we heard about Weissgebergasse is get here early before the crowds do so that way you can get some nice pictures and nice footage in uh, before it gets too packed with tourists and we're here it's about 9 45 in the morning so it's not really too early but it's also pretty empty here so get here in the morning the views are beautiful the sunlight coming in from the one side of the uh, street is great you get some nice lighting on the buildings um, and again no crowds so get here early Behind me is St. Sebald, one of the three major churches here in the center of Nuremberg. And it is a Gothic style church built in the year 1225. And it was named for Sebaldus, an eighth century hermit and the patron saint of Nuremberg. So we're here inside Nuremberg Castle, one of the most formidable medieval fortresses. This was an important castle for the Holy Roman Empire as the rulers didn't have one castle that they ruled from, instead traveled around to the different castles and fortifications. And this was one of the ones for the Holy Roman Empire that the rulers stayed at. Construction of the castle began as early as 1000 AD and then was completed and added to over the next few centuries. After various levels of destruction over the years um, in 
the 30s, it was actually rebuilt to what was thought to be its original state by Nazi Germany. And then this is another building that was destroyed during the war. And then it took about 30 years after the war for this to be rebuilt once again to its current condition. So we're going to be taking a look around the grounds, taking a look inside the castle, uh, taking a look from the views because we are up on the hill here and uh, just enjoying another time here in Nuremberg. church on our stop here in Nuremberg is the Frauenkirche. 
It was built between 1352 and 1362 on the initiative of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV. Over the years, it's been remodeled a number of times, and over the years, it's also switched from a Catholic church to a Protestant church and back again. Like many of the buildings here in Nuremberg, it was destroyed during the war, and not too long after the war, they began the rebuilding process. Another reconstruction was finished in 1991, and I believe that is what brought it to its current state now. So this is one of the three major churches in the city, and now we're gonna go inside and check it out. So for our last meal here in Nuremberg, we are at Zum Spießgesellen, as recommended by uh, a few of our viewers. So we're here enjoying our last meal. I ordered the Schwefele, which was also recommended by some of our viewers. So I'm looking forward to digging into this. I had my local beers from uh, the restaurant itself, and it is delicious. So last night here in Nuremberg, and uh, enjoying our last meal before we pack up and move on to our next city. I think the best way I can describe the Schweifel is very similar to a Schweinhaxe, but the meat is so much more tender and the crispy skin is so much more delicious. It reminds me a little bit of pork rinds, but obviously much, much better. It's made like this kind of blend of pork rinds and bacon, but it's really good. And that layer of fat between the crispy skin and the meat is delicious. So I'm really enjoying this. So thank you to those of you who recommended this as something to get here in Nuremberg because it was worth it. And just like that, our time in Nuremberg is over. We had a lovely couple days here. It is a beautiful city with a rich history. Definitely worth visiting. Food was delicious at pretty much every place we went to. So we had a great time here. And if you're in the Northern Bavaria area, I highly recommend coming to Nuremberg. Uh, it is totally worth a stop. The history here is amazing. The city is beautiful. The churches are gorgeous. The food was delicious. All the people we met and interacted with have been awesome, super nice. As, as now is expected for us in any of our interactions with Germans. So it's been a great time here and we're looking forward to our next stop and the next adventure.